everyone, welcome back. We're on to episode 5 of our Everton career mode. And it's not going to be an easy one today. We still got Wolves from last month. Then we face Spurs in City. Honestly, I'm not sure how we're scraping points off these teams. Then we face Brentford away. You know what, they're no slouch. It's going to be a tough one as well. One thing before we start, we had that Carabao Cup fixture against West Ham. We ended up losing 3-1. You know what, it is what it is. We heavily rotated the squad. West Ham put out a starting lineup. And I'm not too worried because we're focused on the league and we're going to have a proper run at the FA Cup instead. In terms of this Wolves game, Nuno got fired in the summer. They brought in Bruno Lag. I'm not going to guess exactly how they play. I haven't seen enough of it, but they set up in a 5-2-3. It's going to be more like a 3-4-3 because those fullbacks are bombing forward. And the game is going to be won and lost in those wide areas. But for Wolves, it all starts at the back with Connor Cody as essentially a deep-lying playmaker, even though he's a CB, just amazing at passing. They've got a highly technical midfield in Moutinho and Neves in front of them. They're going to be pulling the strings, initiating the offense, and there are also threats from distance, so we're going to have a tough time. Allen and Ducour are going to have their hands full. In terms of their striker, that's just such a complete forward. He's got good dribbling, good finishing. He's an aerial threat. He's physical. We're going to have to try to limit service to him. But yes, this game is going to be won and lost in those wide areas. They've got such good dribblers and pace, whether it be Trincao, Semedo from fullback, Traore if he comes on or if he starts. So we're going to have to neutralize their threat while at the same time taking advantage of vacated spaces when they go forward. And that's what I mean. This game is going to be won and lost in those wide areas. We're going to play the 4-4-2 because we don't really need to pack the center. We do need the wide midfielders to help out in defense so that we don't get overloaded. In terms of our CB partnership, I'm going to go with Mina and Keane because Jimenez is such a physical presence. And I also want Godfrey out wide to neutralize any pacey strikers. Coleman's just not fast enough for this game. Will you please make some noise as we welcome our visitors Everton and put your hands together for your Wolverhampton Wanderers. Wolverhampton Wanderers line up as follows. Number 22, Nelson Semedo. So we created the early chances in this game. We got Richarlison into the box. He had a few good half chances early on in the game. Goalkeeper made some good saves, but the, the real key here was that they didn't have that defensive-minded midfielder, that CDM who would protect the back line. And so every time the ball passed Moutinho and Neves in midfield, we would get a run on it. They would be backpedaling, and that's how we created our chances. First 15-20 minutes, really good from us. We dominated, but slowly Wolves got back into the game and honestly found their rhythm and started playing exactly how I thought they would be playing. Pushing those fullbacks forward, this time Semedo on the right puts a good cross into Jimenez and we're fortunate not to lose a goal. This was a common theme. You can see how, how wide and how far those fullbacks push forward. This time they get it back to Moutinho. He gets an outside shot. It's really close, but that's what they want to do, Wolves. Overload the wide areas and then either cross to Jimenez or push it back. I mean, that midfield of Moutinho and Neves is just excellent. And that was the difference in this game. They're such a technical midfield. They play it around us here. It's easy on the eye. Jimenez makes a good run forward. He gets the ball. And honestly, he's got everything in his locker. He's able to pick out a pass here. Neves goes in and it's 1-0. To be fair, this was a comedy of errors. Because you can see in the replay here, Allen just ball watches. Completely just ball watches. He doesn't pick up the runner. Neves goes in behind him. And I'm just looking at this in the replay and thinking, why are you Why are you just standing there? Pick up the runner. Maybe have some awareness around you. Nope. Mina also tried to head the ball out there. It didn't work. And that was the first half. The second half, they made a key adjustment. It was a really intelligent adjustment. They didn't push the fullbacks farther forward. They were essentially playing a back five. And that really stumped me. I couldn't get much going. The whole rest of the game was basically like this. Just little half chances. You can see they're playing a back five. They didn't push farther forward this time. So they had enough men behind the ball where I was trying to find space. And maybe found some pockets. But... Their CBs were there to clear it out. Unfortunately, guys, we lose this game 1-0. It's our second loss of the season, and we failed to pick up points. It's unfortunate. We're going to have to do better in the remaining games. Yeah, 1-0. Oh, 
Okay, so small little team meeting here. This is the league table after 10 games. So nothing too surprising other than maybe Man City not getting more points at this stage. Arsenal and Chelsea had bad starts, but they're climbing up the table. We are ninth with 16 points. I would have liked to be a little bit higher at this point in the season. We need to be getting points against teams like Norwich at home. We can't lose those games or it's going to bury us. We need to do better against Villas and Wolves because that's where our points are going to come from. In terms of our tactics, I feel like they're decent, but there are certain things that need to be addressed. Godfrey is susceptible to losing headers, and he's also not very good at getting the ball out of the press. He has the weakest passing out of all the CBs. I feel like we need to get him on a development plan to maybe address at least one of those areas. In terms of the rest of the squad, I feel like we need help in the winter transfer window when it comes to the wide midfield positions. Gray and Towns that are doing us a decent job, but we need more quality in that, and we also need impact subs off the bench in those positions who can inject pace into the game. I just don't have anyone at this point. In terms of stuff that we need to do moving forward, we need to keep clean sheets. We need to do better defensively. We cannot have breakdowns and we cannot have individual errors like the past few games. For the Spurs game, honestly, I'm just hoping for a clean sheet, even if it's a nil-nil draw. Nuno came into the club. I'm not really sure exactly how they play, but looking at how they set up, it's a 4-3-3. So they're obviously going to be naturally good countering. The personnel they have also means they're going to be decent at holding the ball. So these are the things we have to watch out for, and I feel like it's a bit of a pick-your-poison situation. Kane is excellent, obviously, at finishing, but he's also pretty good at passing, and they're going to be able to push either midfielders past them or the wide forwards are going to be able to go into the box and count on balls in behind from Kane. So we're going to have to limit this and stop their counters because I don't want Mora and Son beating us. They have electric pace and it's just going to have a it's going to be a bad day for us so what we want to do is instead make the midfield beat us through the middle of the park and I know this is also dangerous because with Hoiberg with Lo Celso or if they play Dali Ali Ndombele they have all these great passers so it's going to be difficult we have to keep organized we have to stay close to them not give them a lot of time on the ball and do our best to then be able to counter and attack their main weakness, which I think is their fullbacks because they're slow. Now, the team sheet says it's Doherty and Davies, not Emerson and Regillian, which means that we're going to be able to pace abuse them from the wide areas. This is why we're going to set up in the 4-4-2. I'm going to play Godfrey on right back to neutralize Son, so that's number one. Number two, this affords our wide midfielders to draw back and start defending, doubling up on Son and Mora, so that's going to force them in the middle. We're going to have to stay solid and make sure we don't get beat there. Offensively, we're going to be able to move quickly, vertically on the left and on the right. Dean to Gray to Richarlison, Godfrey to Townsend to Calvert-Lewin. And that's maybe what's going to give us this win. Please make some noise as we welcome our visitors, Tom Hotspur and your Everton. And the Everton lineup is here. All right, guys, it's on fast forward just to show you how well Tottenham played in a short passing system. This was like 18 or 19 passes where they were just trying to probe and find a way in. They were really creative, but in the end, we stopped this particular chance. This would be a theme in the game, though. Here's another chance out wide to Son this time. They would have their little chances, especially early on. They dominated the first 30 minutes. It was hard to get something going. This time it falls to Kane. Honestly, we were lucky that it didn't go in. You'd think Kane would have buried that. But yes, they were playing that short passing system. And at first I thought maybe, maybe we just made a mistake here because they're playing really well and getting better opportunities than I would have hoped. This one again, off the corner, they play it into, I think, Tangdanya, who got onto the ball. It was saved. We managed to save the ball, and this is where we shined. Two passes, one to Gray from Dean, then into Richarlison. He's into the box, and this is where Tottenham were fortunate not to be 1-0 down. Good save by Loris. We should have done better finishing that, but this is exactly the type of weakness we wanted to exploit. They got a little bit too far forward. And Doherty and Davies are going to get exposed like that. It was a corner off of that. And Calvert-Lewin buries it. 1-0. What a start. 
great set piece goal and honestly i'm really hoping we can get more of these because we have the aerial presence and it's just about the delivery this time it breaks the deadlock against spurs and i breathe the sign of relief after this because it was just so nice to get an early lead now it's just all about keeping that clean sheet they didn't wait long for a response kane got on the ball he wired it it's a save by Pickford, but what a shot by Kane. That was vicious. Kane came up with a really good save. This was going to be a really tough game for the remainder. And we had a little bit of an opportunity here, I thought, to push forward. But it was a mistake. I said we need to watch out for that counter. Kane, good hold-up play. Gets into Ndombele. He plays the ball into Mora. And I'm thinking, this is 1-1. This is what we were trying to avoid. Pickford cuts the angle off. What a save. Again, he's been saving us all season. But that was tactically incorrect from us. We should not have pushed up as far forward as we did. We gave them a chance. They almost capitalized on it. I tried to stay back. I think that was the only counter opportunity they had in the game. We had a nice little chance late on in the first half. Ducore got on the ball. It was a decent shot, but not enough teeth. Then in the second half, we started off similarly well. Again, we played this left-hand side. Dean to Gray into Richarlison past that slow poke fullback. We put the ball in. Another headed chance for Calvert-Lewin. This time, I'm not sure if he was pushed or he didn't get it cleanly. Too bad because it could have been 2-0. And it's lightning fast on the wing counters. Two balls, you're into the box. This is exactly what we wanted to do. Now, the game really did change when Kane came off. Scarlet came on and Tottenham started playing not a short passing game. They changed it up completely because they didn't have Kane who was holding everything together. They tried to play more direct and honestly, it got a lot easier to defend. We were able to clean up every ball in behind and sort of play comfortably for the rest of the game. We ended up getting this result. It's a clean sheet, everyone. And not only that, we got a set piece goal. We got a win against Tottenham, a massive result. As good as that win was, we still need help in the transfer window. So next episode, I'm going to provide a full shortlist of guys that I've scouted. And we're going to look at who to potentially bring in in the winter to help us get Europa League next season. For now, we're on to the City game. And I mean, what am I going to say? It's... An away game against Manchester City, one of the best teams in the league. It's Guardiola 4-3-3. They're going to push those fullbacks high forward. We're not going to have a lot of the ball, nor do we want it because I just want to play on the counter. But it's the definition of a possession system. And it all starts from the back. Ederson has great distribution into the midfield. They're going to be able to beat the press. They've got ball playing defenders everywhere you look. Stones, Laporte, Diaz. When it comes to the midfield, Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne are going to pull the strings and they are just lethal. It doesn't get better than that when it comes to creativity. They're going to move it out wide if it doesn't work. They have Sterling, Mares, Jesus, all these great players up front. They're going to try to break you down the whole game. The way we're going to try to set up and counter this is first of all, we're going to pack the midfield in our 4-3-3 and make him play wider. I feel like that's a little bit safer. Godfrey is going to play on the right back to add more defensive solidity. And we're just going to try our best to break and hit him on the counter. This is the best we can do. Manchester City are lining up as follows. Number 31, Ederson. Number 5, John Stones. Number 11, Guys, City did not wait a moment to attack me. They went straight at it. Their passing was amazing and they just cut through you like a hot knife through butter, really. Prickford had to make a save third minute in. Then they had a corner and they had a few corners early on in the game and I couldn't deal with it, not because they went short, because I expected them to go short, but Sterling has this dribble and it's really hard to stop it, especially off a corner for some reason. They worked the ball into the box here after and Sterling lays it off, a good shot by De Bruyne, another save by Pickford, that's, that's already twice he's had to bail us out in the first five minutes, so that set the tone for the game. I tried my best to play exactly how I wanted to off the counter, and at times it worked. Just one touch pass, one touch pass, one touch pass again, 
where Charleston's on the end of it. It's not 100% an opportunity, but it's a decent chance, and this is how I wanted to play. Off the counter, we tried our best. Again, Sterling with these corners. This time, they work it a little bit faster. He works it back in. We did initially defend this well, but then we tried to play it out too fast. Jesus gets on the end of it, and he just it's unstoppable. 1-0. We should have done something differently there. Either we should have been more careful or Holgate should have played it even faster and then maybe we would have gotten a break. It's 1-0. I try not to be down about myself. I said, let's try to abuse this left-hand side. We put it out to Dean and we get it into Decore. He flies in for a header and it is 1-1. Perfect response. Surprising goal a little bit, though I will say... I did notice in their team sheet that they were playing Stones at right back and Zinchenko center back. I don't know if this is some sort of uh, Guardiola ingenuity again or just some randomness, but I'll take it anyway. I can get it. I said to myself, let's try to abuse that left side because Stones is not much of a left back. But yes, we continued on the game. Not much after that, maybe five minutes. They play out from the back as you saw Ederson. This time they use that left side. They get it out to Sterling and this guy is just magic on the ball in this game. His dribbling is insane. It is in real life too. They get it in again to Jesus and he puts it in the back of the net. Pickford is just livered. And yeah, we did have some individual errors there but like Sterling is just insane in his dribbling skills. Again, I say to myself, let's just be aggressive and try to hit him. Maybe they'll lose concentration again. Let's have a go. Richarlison, I start dribbling against Stones. He's not a left back. I'm saying he's not a right back. Let's continue. Okay, I turn. He fouls us in the box. Amazing stuff. Okay, we have a penalty here. And I'm like, all right, that looked fair like a penalty. Let's just review here. He did get us. It was a clear penalty. And I'm like, all right. Here we go, Richarlison. You missed the first penalty in the season. Let's see what you can do this time. And I'm thinking, all right, the pressure's on. I'm going to go right here. And then in the last moment, I'm like, all right, no, 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 no. Let's just go center. It was sort of a last-minute decision. We tapped the ball this time. It goes in. It's 2-2. What a game so far. Like It isn't even half time, and it's 2-2. This is insane, and they just came at us even before halftime with all these corners. This time they started whipping it in, and they had another nice little pass and play here. Pickford makes another save, and they just kept coming and coming with these corners, and this is just a fraction of what I'm showing you. Pickford, another save, and then they come back again, and it's another corner, and another one cleared by us, and another insane volley by Bernardo Silva. It's a save again. Pickford is on top of his game. This part I'm going to fast forward for you guys. Just to show you how the second half went. It's a tennis match. It really is. Just look at it. We get the ball and we immediately look to attack. City gets the ball back. They're passing. They're moving forward. And we're just trying as to apply as much pressure as possible. We get the ball back really quickly, really aggressively. And we're just thinking go forward, go forward, go forward. Again here, they try to play out from the back. You can see how we're pressing and we get the ball back. We try to be as aggressive as possible. It doesn't work. City gets it back. Now they're playing the ball forward. Again, Ducouré gets it back because of his aggressive positioning. One, two, three, four. We're on the counter again. City gets it back again. And this was like 20, 30 minutes right after the start of the second half where it was just a literal tennis match. City finally break in a different fashion. They put the ball, not short passing, but a little bit, you know, bypassing the midfield. They finally get me disorganized in defense. It's played into the lap, the substitute that came on, and it's a goal. I'm kicking myself a little bit because I was a little bit too aggressive. I tried to just match them, press for press, and it didn't work out in the end for me. The lap buries it. It's unfortunate. We lose this game 3-2, but what a thriller. This is the craziest game I've ever played, and I understand how it is to play against City when you're just trying to press them, like that Liverpool City game. It's crazy. 3-2 in the end. We lose against City. Guys, honestly, I'd love nothing more than to just talk about that Man City game some more. Even make a separate video because that game was absolutely nuts. But I'm going to go on to the Brentford game. 
And I think this is the first time in the season I'm facing a 5-3-2. So that'll be interesting. From what I hear, this coach is really offensive, really adventurous. He likes to press high. And it doesn't matter what team he's facing. He's not afraid. Those fullbacks are going to be providing width, I assume. The duo partnership of Tony Mbuemo or even Wisa, if they play, are going to be getting balls into them. So we're going to have to watch out for that primarily because Tony is very physical, good aerial presence. Mbuemo is a little bit faster and more agile, but they create great partnerships up there. Onyeka below them is just a beast physically. I mean, whew. And then Rico Henry is flying on that left side. So they're really physical this side. They're really prepared for the Premier League. And this is something that can easily throw you off because if you're not up for the game, they can run you off the pitch. In terms of their center backs as well, they're just really strong, all of them. Ayer, Pontus, Janssen, and Pinnock. So we're not just going to be able to abuse them with Calvert-Lewin either. We're going to have to find some interesting solutions. In terms of how we set up, I'm not going to do anything too fancy. Just stick with a 4-4-2. We're the better team here, technically. We're going to try to dictate the play. I'm going to play Godfrey and Mina as the CBs. The pace from Godfrey and the physicality from Mina should counter their partnership up front. And I'm going to give a start to Gordon. I promised I'd give him one. Let's see what he has. Let's let him get his stripes. Brentford had a really good game, guys, but by far the standout performer here was Ivan Tony. I mean, this guy is just fantastic. His hold-up play is good. His interplay, his link-up is excellent. He sets up Wisa for the first chance of the game here. All right, he doesn't get it in, but Ivan Tony was a real thorn in our side this game. Overall, it was pretty even. There were chances on both sides. Here we get one. Dean sends Gray into the box. All right, it's a tough angle, but he gets a shot off. And Calvert-Lewin almost has the rebound here, but Pinnock is strong enough to muscle him off. Everywhere there were good performances. Gordon had a really good one. He used this pace to get in behind. Decent dribbling skills here. He sets up Richarlison. And son, what are you doing? Just smash that in. Unfortunate. Back to Brentford though. Ivan Tony, he was the star of this show. And he was the headline because he was involved in almost everything Brentford did. Here he gets a decent shot off. Pickford is forced to make a save. I mean, we should consider buying him because whether we have Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison or not, this would be a massive addition to the side, even for rotation purposes. He's fantastic. Late on in the first half, we have another chance. We're trying to break them down as best we can. Different solutions. This time, Davies gets it on the outside. Another save by the goalie. We're trying different things here. We were struggling for this entire second half here, but finally after a long midfield battle, we get it out, they commit a little bit too far forward, it's a counter, Townsend books it on the wing, he sees Iwobi on the other side, crosses to him, Iwobi squares it for Calvert-Lewin, what a play, and what a goal. That was a beautiful counter, Brentford just committed that little bit too much, and we were able to capitalize on it. It was a great cross from Townsend, a great vision to pick out Iwobi, and great creativity for Iwobi to find Calvert-Lewin. But Brentford was not going to have any of this. They were pressing us till the very end, trying to find a way in back into this game. Salvaging a point would be great for them. They had a number of chances again. It was Ivan Tony at the center of all of it. He gets a chance. Great save by Pickford. And then another chance came. Again, Ivan Tony was part of it. This time, he would lay it off in for Wisa. And again, Pickford would be the one saving this and saving us the three points because we would go on to win this game against Brentford 1-0. This is another clean sheet for us. After that team meeting, a second clean sheet. I think we'll forgive ourselves for the uh, non-clean sheet against Man City. It's really difficult to do that. But overall, six points since the meeting and a great episode. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.